Welcome to our tutorial on the CSS box model. The model is essential for understanding and mastering layout and design in CSS as it dictates how elements are sized and spaced on a web page. We'll cover each component of the box model in detail to ensure you have comprehensive understanding by the end of this session. Whether you're a beginner, or a professional web page developer, this tutorial will provide valuable insight into how the box model works and how to use it effectively in your projects. So let's get started and unlock the full potential of CSS in crafting visually appealing and well-structured web pages. Components of the CSS box model. At the heart of the box model lies the content. This is where the text, images, videos, and other media reside. It is the core element defining the primary information you wish to display. The size of the content is controlled by the width and the height properties in CSS. When designing a web page, the content is your starting point around which all other layers of the box model are built. Properly managing content size is essential for ensuring that your elements appear as intended across different devices and screen sizes. Encircling the content is the border. As you can see, a color blue. This is a line that wraps around the content and its padding. It can be styled using several properties such as border width, border style, and border color. They are instrumental in providing visual separation between elements and can be customized to enhance the aesthetics of your design. The border is a flexible layer allowing you to create everything from dividers to attention grabbing outlines. Next is the padding. The padding surrounds the content and it sits within the border and the padding of course. This invisible space provides a buffer between the content and the border. This ensures that your text or media isn't cramped against the edges. Padding can be adjusted by using CSS properties such as padding top, padding right, padding bottom, padding left. Proper use of padding enhances readability and the overall user experience by giving your content room to breathe. Outside the border is the margin. It is the space between your element and neighboring elements. Margin are used to create distance and prevent elements from touching each other. Contributing to a clean and organized layout, they can be set on all sides such as padding, properties such as margin top, margin right, margin bottom, and margin left. Unlike padding, margins are entirely external and do not affect the element size. They play an important role in the positioning and alignment of elements on your page. The fill area right here encompasses the content and extent of the inside edge of the border. This area can be styled with background colors or images using properties such as background color and background image. The area fill allows for creative design choices. It enables you to enhance the visual appeal of your elements by strategically applying backgrounds, you can make your content stand out 
and create a cohesive look for your website. So when determining the final width of your layout, so you need to account for several components. So it has the following formula. But before we delve into that, this is the analogy of the CSX box model. So we have the content having width and having specific height. We have the padding. As you can see, this is a picture frame. Then the border box will be the frame. So maybe the padding as an analogy is a piece of paper behind the picture. And the margin will be the distance of each frame to other frame. So the images is from Web Dev Learn CSS box model. Moving on, so let's calculate the final size of the element through its winded height. So when determining the final width of an element, you need to account for several components. The formula for the total width is as follows. For the final element width, you have a left border, you have a left padding, you have the content width, you have also the right padding, and the right border. That encompasses the final element width of a web component. Similarly, the height will be the top border, the top padding, the content height, the bottom padding here, and the bottom border. It is important to note that margins are not included in the element's dimension. Margin exists outside of the element's border. It affects the space between elements but not their actual size. Understanding this calculation is crucial for creating layouts that behave as expected. Remember that this is the default behavior for the CSX box model. However, you can change it by using box sizing such as border box. More on that on the next lecture. So the width and height and properties of the box sizing, if you're familiar with border box, will simplify the size management and it will make it easier to create layouts with precise dimension. By mastering this concept, I want to you to master this concept, you can learn how to manipulate the box model. You'll be able to design sophisticated, well-structured web pages that look great and function seamlessly across different device and screen sizes. Now, let us apply this in an HTML and CSS code. But first, as you can see, we have already a default margin. As you can see, the computed and the styles. So the body element has already a margin of 8 pixels. As you can see, the orange. So in order for us to learn, so we will reset the margin and padding using the universal selector. So we have margin and padding of zero. For this lecture, I will be needing to use float. Float is an old way of lay layouting web pages. But for this one, uh, I will create CSS property in order to clear float. So don't worry, I will not use float lay out anymore in this uh, in this course we will go directly to flexbox so for the pseudo classes we have content of none so we have a display block and any floating element will be cleared so this is the way to clear float when you're using a floated layout you can see 
will define a body with a margin of 20 pixels. What is margin of 20 pixels? It means that the body has a margin of 20 pixels of top, right, bottom, and then left. So it means that it has a margin on all sides. If you inspect this dev tools, so as you can see, we have the orange. So it means that the body has a 20 pixel margins on all sides. So it overwrites our universal selector with a margin of zero. So next we will design the H2 element. We can use margin top of 20 pixels. You can see. And also we have margin bottom of 20 pixels. As you can see, if you inspect this one, so it has a margin top of 20 pixels and a margin bottom also of 20 pixels. So if you inspect this one, so you can see the orange box, 20 pixels from the top, 20 pixels from the bottom. Next, we will design our box. So all of the division here, the div tag has a box class. So we'll design the box so that you will understand the CSX model again. The content will be 150 pixels with a height of 150 pixels. So for our line height, again, I will have 150 pixels in order to vertically center this. Text color will be white. Text align will be center. Then I will float all the box class to the left. As you can see our images, it, it has gone from block level element to a floated element. Then we have margin right of 20 pixels to provide distances. So for these images, it's very obvious that we have a specific margin for this one, which is your class blocks, which is the images. So margin right, as you can see, orange of 20 pixels. So the margin is not part of the overall final width and height of the element. It is a separator between each element then we will strategically set our box one class so as you can see here we have two classes one box and one box one so you can overload classes it can have two or single or three or more classes at the same time so for the box one so we can have a background of, for example, we have dark green. So that will be our first box. So for example, I have a border of 5 pixels, solid black. So this one will be the border. And also I have a padding of 10 pixels. Okay, so how can you see? the box model again we, we will inspect this one and you go for the computed layout as you can see to make it clear the content is 150 by 150 if this is the one then we have also a border which is this one you can see border 5 pixels solid black so if you inspect this one again so the border is five pixels all throughout then we have a padding of 10 pixels from top right bottom and left so the overall width of this one is 5 plus 10 plus 150 plus 10 plus 5 the margin is not included remember the margin is not included so from here, if you add all those one, so 150 
plus 20 is 170 plus 5 on the side, which is 10. So the overall width of this element will be 180. Also, 180 for the overall height. So as we modify this further, for example, I have a box 2. And we have a background of teal and a border of 10 pick solid black so this one and how about padding of 20 pixels so for the box tree so let's design the box tree so maybe box tree background Let's give it a brown background and a border of 15 pixels solid black. Give it a padding of 30 pixels. So why is the layout uh, falling down? Because it's not. Okay, let's adjust this one. And let's adjust this one. Because we cannot accommodate any more based on the size. So if you inspect this one, so again, so the overall width will be from border, padding, the content. This one is the padding, and we have also the margin right. So if you want to eliminate the last margin, remember we can use the last child. So we will eliminate the margin of this last one. As you can see, we... This has also a specific margins. So in order to eliminate that, I think I taught you earlier in the lecture the last child. So every last child of div, specifically section 1, and for example, section 2, div, last child is say margin right equal zero so we are removing only the margin for the last child as you can see no more margin okay so remember the padding has a filled area you cannot see this one because we are using only text element so how about we apply this one on images for example so let's apply this one on these images so we have img1 as you can see we have img1 right here so same settings with the box element from above for example we have a width of 200 pixels a height of 200 pixels border 10 picks solid black so that will be our border then we have padding of 20 pixels so this is the fill area based from the previous slide so you can fill this one by using background or background images but for now we will fill it with red it's not obvious on this first example because the background is teal but as you can see this is the content width this is the content height the red one is the padding this is the border and this one is the margin it is outside so by setting more css configuration different images for example that img2 how about we give it a width of 100 and a height of 100 pixels border 10 pixels solid black so you can change the color for this one i'm i'm opting for black and background of blue that's the one and next 
we have that img3 let's see we have a width for example of 250 pixels let's adjust this one how about 120 pixels and a height of 120 pixels maybe a border of 20 pixels solid black and a padding of 15 pixels the background will be blue or we could say the background let's change this one about orange so that will be our field area so this orange is the padding this is the border so again the final width you inspect this uh, image number three will be this one so 120 within height okay let me write on the screen so we have 120 for the specific element you can see here these are the width and the height then we have a 20 pixel border of color black. Then we have a padding of 15 pixels with a background of orange. That is very obvious when we're using images. It's not, it's not obvious here for this specific box model, but let's, let, let's see it to it that you'll understand this one. So we inspect this one. Okay, this one is box 3 so this is the box 3 model so element the computed layout so this one is the box 3 model so by default we have a settings of 150 by 150 we have a background of brown we have a border of 15 pixels the padding we inspect this one so we have a padding which is 30. so i write on the screen we have a 30 pixels right here so let's inspect this again this one is the padding so i hope you understand our css box model so this will be very crucial when we are lay, laying out our pages. So you need to understand the box model. This is the default behavior in future layout of real life web pages. We will change the CSX box model to box sizing of border box at it, as it is more easier to manage. So thank you very much and see you on the next lecture.